you're Mark Ruffalo and you're Michael Keaton in the film, if anybody uh, sees it, right? So, uh, That's right. And the, the likenesses are not too bad, are they? Not too um, bad. Look, I'm just fascinated in what you make of the obstacles you had and the delays it took, the time it took to get to the bottom of what was happening in the Catholic Church and the way that it took so long for it all to come out at the BBC. And was it the, the soft cover-up or the hard cover-up, do you think, Walter? Well, I think we're dealing with an entirely different situations. The, the Catholic Church, which was the target of our investigation, is one of the most secretive organizations in the world. And penetrating that organization, which had no documents and no willingness to talk at all, is obviously a, a, a good bit different. I, I think in the larger community sense in, yeah. in Boston, uh, and in every major archdiocese in the United States and probably in other countries, uh, there was way too much deference paid for way too long to the church. And that when accusations of single incidents were made, everybody tended to believe the cardinal when he said, oh, it's just one priest, just like it's one Lutheran priest over here or one Anglican pastor over there. And uh, not enough questions were asked. And... Uh, so therefore, the cover-up of the fact that thousands of priests were abusing children in the United States uh, was allowed to continue for, for too long. And finally, at least, we, we, we did crack the code. And Mike, I mean, there's a great line in the film. I don't think we're giving away the plot here, but the line in the film, of, because the, the paper itself had been reporting a little bit on some of this, hadn't it? And then it... it, it I think the line in the film is, we're all scrambling around in the dark and then someone switches a light on. It's as though suddenly it just all gushes out in one go. Is that, is that how it felt to you? The, the victims, for example, were very quiet and as soon as you reported on it in a big way, so many came forward with their stories. It really did feel that way. I mean, once we got the documents that proved, in the case of the Boston Archdiocese, there was in fact a cover-up at the very highest level. Once we proved that irrefutably and published the information, you see in the last scene of this movie, we come into the office and the phones are literally ringing off the hook. Mm -hmm. And it was as if uh, the dam burst. Uh, suddenly there were hundreds of victims who were super ego to come forward and tell us their stories about bad priests and lives that were destroyed. Uh, re reporting that information made all the difference in the world. We, um, yeah, well, that, that rings true of what's happened in this country, not just on the Savile case, but other cases then of abuse have become much more talked about than they than they ever were. It, what about pointing the finger at blame? At blame? I mean, you in, it, were able to point to particular individuals who knew. What about, but were there lots of people who should have known but didn't know or were willfully blind or who just kind of looked away? Is that, is that a pattern that you saw in the church? I, I think part of the situation is that the church itself presents itself as a uh, paragon of morality. And I think people are very comfortable with having a model of morality yeah. to, to look up to. And I think for many people, it was just impossible to believe uh, that an organization that was the representative of God could be capable of such systemic and deep uh, corruption. It was just very, very difficult to believe. I'll also say that we now know uh, that this problem existed nationwide and worldwide. I think in every city in the United States, there were people who felt something was happening, who may have known something was happening. And for uh, the reasons uh, of, of deference to the church, never really did anything about it. But it, it was, it was uh, the Boston Globe and Marty Barron who turned the lights on, as you said. Do you think it perhaps goes further than just the Catholic Church, though? Because in a way, what came out of the Jimmy Savile case and the poor practice at the BBC was that there were lots of institutions at the same time that were all embarrassed in this kind of way. I wonder whether you've turned over a something that's wider than just the Catholic Church even. Well, of course, in, in the Catholic Church, we found that in, in the Boston Archdiocese, yeah. fully 10% of priests it's had abused children over several decades. And not only was the church itself such a secretive, closed off organization, but within the church, there was a culture of secrecy. The priests who were uh, violating their vow of celibacy by having sex with, with people of appropriate age uh, were quiet about those who were, uh, who were abusing children. But I, I think what knits all of this together for, for all of us is the children and how we protect our children from those among us who would do these things. And the failing in the United States, the failing of 
police and prosecutors, many of whom knew what was going on and sometimes forgave the priests. Uh, the failure of people who suspect this kind of activity in any organization uh, who don't report it are doing an extraordinary disservice yeah. to the children that we all love so much. Yeah, there's a line in the film, it takes a village to teach a child, it takes a village to abuse a child as, uh, exactly. as exactly. well, not people that are doing. Mike, Walter, thanks both very much.